In this video, we are just going to look at one first order differential equation. This is the differential equation that we usually call Newton's law of cooling, but we could also call it Newton's law of warming or Newton's law of the temperature of something is changing. So let capital T here be the temperature at time little t. So hopefully every time I say T, it's clear which T I'm talking about, temperature versus time. So we have the rate of change of temperature with respect to time is equal to some parameter K. So here, this is just a parameter times the difference between the ambient temperature. I usually denote this as I've done here with the subscript A for ambient temperature. Sometimes you'll see subscript E for environmental or M for medium. The idea is it's like the room temperature. It's the temperature of what's around the object whose temperature is changing. And then T again is the temperature. Okay, so let's, let's talk through this differential equation a little bit more. So suppose you have something like a cup of coffee and you fix your cup of coffee in the morning and it's very hot, but you're in your kitchen, which is much, much cooler than the coffee. So the coffee is gonna cool down. The rate of change of the coffee's temperature with respect to time is proportional to the difference between the room temperature and whatever your current coffee temperature is. It usually makes sense here to have an initial condition. So that's like the temperature of your coffee the moment that you pour it. So this should agree with what you've observed whenever you've had an object cool down or heat up. The idea is if your coffee is really, really hot, then it's going to rapidly cool down because the difference between the room temperature and your very, very hot cup of coffee is large. So that means that the rate of change of temperature is going to be a scaled version of that really large number. However, once your coffee has cooled down a lot so that it's almost room temperature, the change isn't going to be that drastic over time. So the rate of change of temperature is proportional to the difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature of the object at time t. That's Newton's law of cooling. Again, it can be used for both cooling and heating up. It's a separable differential equation. So what I would like to do now is, uh, I'm gonna get rid of these little notes here. We will separate this differential equation to solve for the temperature over time. Then we're just going to work through one example, which is in fact about a cup of coffee because honestly, coffee is my favorite beverage. To get to an explicit form for capital T, the temperature over time, let's use separation of variables. What I'm going to do is divide over by the difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature capital T of my coffee. We'll leave the parameter K on the right-hand side and we'll bring D little t over. So the left-hand side is going to be the integral of one divided by the difference between the room temperature and the coffee. We'll integrate that with respect to capital T. And on the right-hand side, we will have K D little t. All right, on the left-hand side, that's going to be natural log of the absolute value of that difference, t sub a minus t, but then actually we have a negative here, so we pick up a negative leading in front of that natural log. On the right-hand side, we will have kt plus a constant of integration. Okay, let's multiply the left and right-hand side by negative one in order to get rid of this leading negative term. Okay, so that's going to leave us with natural log of t sub a minus t, the absolute value of that expression, equals negative kt plus c2, where c2 is negative c1. Okay. We need to exponentiate both sides in order to eventually isolate this temperature expression here. So I'm going to do e to the left-hand side equals e to the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we're just going to be left with that absolute value, t sub a minus t. So the absolute value of that difference equals, on the right-hand side, this is e raised to a sum. We can turn that into a product. It'll be e to the negative kt, little t, times e to the c2. That's another number. So I'm going to call that c3 e to the negative kt. That's going to be my right-hand side, where here C3, it's a positive constant. It's E to the previous constant, C sub two. Let me pause here, let you make sure you agree with all of the steps we've done so far. And I want you to figure out for a minute what we should do with the absolute value here. 
So you can think through the three cases. What if this expression was zero? What if it was positive? What is what if it's negative? And then I will come back and finish this so that we come to an explicit formula for the temperature capital T. All right, what if Ta minus T is zero? That actually means that my coffee is literally room temperature. Then this would be zero, and we would want C3 to be zero. So if we allow for C3 to be zero, we can uh, allow for this absolute value to be the absolute value of zero. If the expression inside of the absolute value here is positive, so if Ta minus T is positive, that actually means that my temperature is lower than room temperature. So I might be looking at like iced coffee, which I never drink by the way, but let's say I have iced coffee in room temperature, it would be warming up. If this were positive, then what we could do is just drop the absolute values and solve for T, we would be done. C3 would be the C3 that we defined here. On the other hand, if what we're taking the absolute value of is actually negative, that would mean that my coffee is hotter than room temperature, that's how it is for me then we would say, okay, to drop the absolute values here, we would pick up a negative on the right-hand side. So C3 is going to absorb the sign over from the left-hand side. So all three cases can be rolled into just one equation, drop the absolute value, and then let this constant just absorb whether it's positive zero or negative. Once we've done that, we're actually done modifying that constant. So I'm also going to switch to just calling it C. So we will have T A minus T equal to this constant that now absorbs the behavior of that absolute value, E to the negative K T. And now if I wanna isolate T, I could move that over, move that over. I'm going to leave T on the left-hand side though and say that my temperature over time, capital T, is the ambient temperature minus C E to the negative K T. This is the general solution now, but we actually have an initial value problem because it makes sense to say that my coffee started at some temperature. So whatever that temperature is, it's what I'm gonna call T subscript zero. So the moment I pour my coffee, we are at capital T of zero. That's what we're calling this initial temperature. So that is what I'm gonna put on the left-hand side, capital T of zero. On the right-hand side, it's whatever the ambient temperature is. This is just some fixed room temperature. Minus C times E to the zero, that's gonna be the ambient temperature minus C. So now I can solve for this constant. It's going to be, put it over here, uh, the ambient temperature minus the starting temperature. Okay, so now we can summarize all the work we've done here and say what the temperature is over time. So the temperature of my coffee over time is going to be the ambient temperature minus the ambient temperature minus the initial temperature e to the negative kt. k little t, that's time. If you wanted to, you could also distribute this negative into the constant and write this as the ambient temperature plus the initial temperature minus the ambient temperature if you wanted to. So if you are looking at a formula and it's slightly different than this, it might just be a question of what to do with that negative. Okay, let's just talk through this equation. Let's look at a couple special cases. So first, let me just verify that we've satisfied the initial condition. When little t is zero, so when we start, when we pour a cup of coffee, this becomes one. So the ambient temperatures cancel out and we're left with our initial temperature. Okay, so that makes sense. What happens if I pour my cup of coffee and it's exactly room temperature? Well, if I have coffee, which is the same temperature as the room it's in, it would never heat up or cool down. It would just be room temperature because it's the same as the ambient temperature around it. And we see that here because if the initial temperature is the same as the ambient temperature, then Ta minus T sub zero becomes zero and this whole second term vanishes, leaving us just with this constant solution that the temperature over time is the ambient temperature. You could see that too if you look back at the differential equation. If you plug in that the temperature is the ambient temperature, then you get that the rate of change over time is always zero. This is an equilibrium solution. And again, that should make sense 
that if you are room temperature, you would never change. Okay, so that, that makes sense. What happens if I have some hot cup of coffee? Well, then this is non-zero. Let time go to infinity. Then what happens is e to the negative kt, this expression is gonna go to zero. So k is this positive constant of proportionality. As time goes to infinity, this is like e going to negative infinity, if you will, so this is zero, which means that over time, my hot cup of coffee approaches the, the room temperature. So we would see it decrease from where it started to room temperature. That would be the same if it was iced coffee as well. So if I poured a very cold cup of coffee, this would be positive. So we would have a higher room temperature than the temperature of my beverage. But as time went to infinity, this would vanish, leaving us with room temperature coffee. So whether it's hot coffee or cold coffee, they both tend over time to room temperature. Okay, let's now take this equation. And given that we've already solved this differential equation, we are going to look at a specific cup of coffee. Um, given that this is the form of the solution, we don't need to do all this work again. All we really have to do is identify what's the ambient temperature, what's the starting temperature, and what's this constant of proportionality K for a given scenario. So K here might represent like properties of your object. So some objects might cool faster than others. And so K is going to give you those kinds of properties. So we, we typically have to work out K for a given example. Okay, so in our example, we'll identify T sub A, T sub zero, and K. We'll figure out what K is. And then what I want to conclude with is actually a picture of the slope field for this differential equation. And everything we see on the slope field should agree with the little analysis that I just did out loud. Okay, we are just going to do one example in this lesson because the equation is the same whether you're heating up or cooling down. So the math might feel a little different, but it's ultimately the same equation. So we're gonna look at the example of cooling. Suppose I have a cup of coffee, which is 85 degrees Celsius in my kitchen, which is 25 degrees Celsius. I don't drink the coffee though. I let 10 minutes go by. And after 10 minutes, my coffee has cooled down to 60 degrees Celsius. Given this information, we are going to work out what this constant of proportionality K is for this coffee. And then we will figure out how long it takes for the coffee to cool down to 40 degrees Celsius. What I wanna leave you with at the end of this example is the slope field for this example. However, it's really the slope field for Newton's law of cooling in general, but we'll get to that. Okay, so let's start with finding the parameter K. What I would like for you to do as you watch me work through these first two questions is think about whether or not you have the same uh, algebra like steps in mind, because the rest of this example isn't really about differential equations. We already solved the differential equation. So we did separation of variables. We're not gonna do it again. The rest of this example is really about working with say exponential functions. So if you're a little bit rusty on how to work with exponentials and natural logs, that might be the focus of this example for you. So suppose I have a fresh cup of coffee, which is 85 degrees Celsius in a kitchen, which is 25 degrees Celsius. I don't drink the coffee though. I just noticed that after 10 minutes, the temperature of my coffee has dropped down to 60 degrees Celsius. We want to figure out what K is. So here's the equation that we worked out with separation of variables. We need to figure out what K is. And then with that knowledge, we can figure out when our coffee will be 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have that the temperature over time is the ambient temperature. That is 25. So that's the temperature of the room that our coffee is in. Minus the ambient temperature of 25 minus the starting temperature, so that was 85, e to the unknown parameter k times time times negative one, so e to the negative kt. So this is going to be overall 25 plus 60, e to the negative kt. Okay, so that's filling in what we know, given in the problem, what we need to find is k. We have enough information to find that though, because we are told that after 10 minutes have gone by, our coffee is 60 degrees. So here, when little t is 10, big T of little t, so the temperature after 10 minutes is 60 degrees. So 
So I can say 60 on the left equals 25 plus 60 e to the negative k times 10. I'll write that as negative 10 times k. We just have to solve for k now, and I'm going to solve for k using ultimately a natural log. I'll talk about that more in the end, but um, the process here would be similar in, in any kind of similar heating or cooling problem. So I'll subtract 25 over, we'll have 35 equals 60 e to the negative 10 k. Divide both sides by 60. 35 over 60 reduces to 7 over 12 equals e to the negative 10 k. Take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of 7 over 12 is natural log of e to the negative 10 k, but that's just going to return us the negative 10 k. So now we can isolate k. This parameter k for my cup of coffee is negative 1 over 10 times natural log of 7 over 12. Okay, so that is the constant k that we were missing. Couple remarks. The first remark is that you should leave this in exact form for as long as you can. So it might be tempting to just plug this into a calculator and get some decimal expression, but I would really like for you to keep this the way it is, and you'll actually see why in our next computation. So keep this as it is. The second remark I want to make is that this might look negative, and I said that k was positive. However, natural log of a number between 0 and 1 is a negative number. So overall, this is actually positive. Okay, so we found k. The next thing we want to do is figure out when our coffee will be 40 degrees. So let me step aside, and then I will come back, and we will figure out when that cup of coffee drops down to 40 degrees. We would now like to work out a time, little t, given a temperature, capital T. Let's start by rewriting our temperature over time as the ambient temperature 25 minus the ambient temperature minus the initial temperature. So I'm just rewriting those given conditions. E to the negative k, so I'm going to write negative times the k value we just worked out, which was negative 1 over 10, natural log of 7 over 12, times t. Okay, so I've plugged in now all of the constants that we need to fully describe the temperature over time. Let's simplify. The beginning we've already seen, but I would like for you to pay attention to how I simplify this exponential. So we'll have 25 plus 60. And let me start by, you know, negative negative is going to be positive. And then I'm going to think of this as t over 10 times the natural log. So what I'm actually going to write is e to the natural log of 7 over 12 times t over 10. This expression, e to the natural log of 7 over 12 times t over 10, is e to a product. We could write that as e to the first, that expression to the second. Okay, let me do that. We will have 25 plus 60. What I'm trying to describe here is I'm going to rewrite this as e to the natural log of 7 over 12, all of that to the t over 10. So that's a rule about exponents. e to the something to the something is e to their product. So here I've just gone the other direction. But e to the natural log of 7 over 12 is 7 over 12. So that's what I wanted to highlight with this algebra, is that this often happens with these kinds of growth and decay problems or temperature going up, temperature going down. So you have exponentials and logarithms, and sometimes you have this kind of expression, which can be simplified into something pretty nice. You would rather have 7 over 12 to the t over 10. If you wanted to come up with an exact answer, um, you're, you'd be better off with this expression than if you plugged in a decimal up here. So I like leaving this exact form and then doing this kind of simplification. OK, the question now is, when will the temperature be 40 degrees Celsius? So let's continue that problem over here. So when, we're looking for a little t value, when is the temperature 40? OK, so we'll plug 40 into the left-hand side. For the right-hand side, we're trying to solve for a little t here. So 25 plus 60 times 7 over 12 to the t over 10. 
Okay, subtract 25 over, we get 15 is 60 times 7 over 12 to the t over 10. Divide both sides by 60, that's going to be 1 over 4 on the left equals 7 12 it's raised to the t over 10. Take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of 1 4 is going to be natural log of this whole expression, 7 over 12 to, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to close off my natural log quite so quickly. Natural log of 7 over 12 to the t over 10, all of that inside of the natural log. But the way natural log works is t over 10 is going to come down in front. We have t over 10, natural log of 7 over 12. And now I can solve for t. So multiply by 10, divide by natural log of 7 over 12. The exact answer for t is 10 times natural log of a quarter divided by natural log of 7 over 12. OK, what is that? I mean, that's the exact answer, but here the decimal is more illustrative. If you plug this now into the calculator, now that I've got to the very end of what I was looking for, we can say that this is about 25.7 minutes. Okay, the unit of time here is, is minutes. So if I wait 26 minutes, my coffee is going to be under 40 degrees. The last thing we want to do with this exercise is look at the slope field for this differential equation. Before we do that, though, I just want to point out that the differential equations part of Newton's law of cooling, we did at the very beginning. So we had that general differential equation, we separated variables, and we found this kind of expression for the temperature over time. Then to work through this particular problem was really an exercise in algebra, not in differential equations. I didn't separate the variables again. So that means that whenever we're doing Newton's law of cooling or heating problems from this moment forward, we have the form of the solution. It's really more a question now of knowing how to solve for terms. So that might involve being comfortable with exponential functions and logarithmic functions and that sort of thing. So if you're working through these kinds of problems, make sure you review, say, the properties of your exponential function. Okay, let me step aside now in case you're writing this down, and then we will look at the slope field. Let's finish this lesson by looking at the slope field for Newton's law of cooling. To generate the slope field, I'm going to use the numbers from the example that we were just looking at, but it's actually qualitatively the same style slope field regardless of the example. So here I've written down the original differential equation that we solved. So we have the rate of change of temperature with respect to time is some positive constant of proportionality times the difference between the room temperature and the current temperature of the object. Now, if you look at the right-hand side of this differential equation, you'll notice that we have exactly one equilibrium solution. In fact, we already talked through it. We have one equilibrium solution when the coffee is literally room temperature. So if you have an object whose temperature is the same as the ambient temperature, then it has no reason to heat up or cool down. And if you plug, t sub a into this differential equation, what you'll see is that the rate of change of temperature is zero, so it's just not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay at the ambient temperature for all time. So to the slope field at the value t sub a, let's add to the right a bunch of little line segments which are flat. So that indicates that there is zero rate of change for any temperature which finds itself at that value. Now what happens if we have a hot cup of coffee? So imagine now that we're looking up above the ambient temperature. Well, if you look at the right-hand side of this differential equation, and I'm just going to talk through this qualitatively. I don't want to plug any actual numbers into this. If your temperature is hotter than the room temperature, then this number is negative. And the hotter it is, the steeper the resulting slope. So if the temperature is just above room temperature, this is going to be a negative, uh, a negative number, which is almost zero. So that's going to be like flat slopes. But then if you have something that's really, really hot, this negative number is going to be farther and farther from zero. So to fill in the slope field above the ambient temperature, what we're going to see is that the slopes get increasingly steep 
the farther away from the equilibrium temperature we go. We have the same behavior for cool objects. So if I have iced coffee that's just under room temperature, then the ambient temperature minus the temperature of my uh, kind of lukewarm iced coffee is, this number is going to be positive. So if I have a cool object, it's going to be positive, but it's going to be close to zero. So that's like not very steep slopes. However, if I have really, really cold coffee, then this is going to be like more positive, if you will. So it's, it's still positive, but it's going to be steeper slopes. So that's qualitatively how Newton's law of cooling works. The farther away you are from room temperature, the more drastic you're going to appear to heat up or cool down. As you approach room temperature, you don't see such drastic changes. Over time, as time goes to infinity, everybody, hot and cold, approaches room temperature. So we have this long-term behavior that all solutions tend to the ambient temperature.